Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Built in Ohio, our podcast where we're talking with and about technology across the state. And it is such an amazing time. It's so exciting to see all the momentum uh, that has been popping up across Ohio from southern part on the Ohio River all the way up to Lake Erie in the northern part and everywhere in between. And today we are so welcome or so excited to welcome uh, someone who is part of the team that has really springboarded in the past few years this exciting work. So Katie, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just so grateful for you to take the time to share a little bit about your work and the meta story today. Thanks so much, Chris. We're so excited to be here. We love our partnership with Ohio X and the amazing work that you and your team do every day. Thank you. Well, well thank you. And uh, to start, uh, and, and I actually use this all the time as I'm talking with groups or kind of out and about, um, because we have an interesting kind of origin story that lines up with some of the kind of the timeline that meta. Um, and I know the big data center that you all have in central Ohio, you know, that takes many, many years to build. Um, but as an organization, we started just a couple months before COVID. Uh, I think the last thing I got to go to in person was actually the grand groundbreaking opening ceremony uh, for Meta in New Albany, uh, where the community came out and then we all went home for like a year and a half, two years. Um, but if you could, for those maybe not familiar, uh, tell us a little bit about the New Albany Meta story, uh, what the impact, what it looks like today. And then we'll probably wind it back and talk about how it all came to be. You know, Chris, that was such a wild time. I think back to February 2020 and gosh, we had no idea, right, that all of that was going to happen, um, including at our grand opening ceremony, which I know you were a part of. And so many of our wonderful partners there on the ground were a part of that. Our grand openings are really the, the culmination of us being so excited to call a certain community home and for us as a company to hit a major milestone that we work for, and that is to go live and start serving traffic at our data centers. If you're in the data center industry, then you know how exciting it is for that day where you flip the switches and you spend so long under construction. So when you finally have the opportunity to do what data centers do best, and that is to serve our clients and, and run our platforms. It is just such an exciting time for the team, for the community to come together and celebrate that. And who would have thought we would have had this amazing celebration? And then three weeks later, we would all be at home going, oh, my goodness, it's amazing to think what all, what all we did in February 2020. But, yeah, that was an exciting time for us. Uh, you know, we broke ground on our data center there in New Albany, Ohio in 2017. It takes a little while to build these facilities, right? We want to build them smartly. We want to make sure we have our amazing partners. Our GC is Turner Construction. They're a huge part of that. And then it's a really exciting day when we finally are able to have a facility that we can bring servers into, get them locked and loaded. Our team on the ground gets excited. And then it's one of our many ways we celebrate the progress and the steps it took to get to that point of serving traffic. We bring in our partners and amazing partners like you and Mayor Sloan, Sloan Spalding and the Ohio company team. We bring them together to really celebrate this project that is not just a huge stepping stone for Meta because we finally get to do what we do best, which is keep our platforms and apps up and running. But we get to celebrate the partners on the ground that truly made this project happen, right? Without you guys, we wouldn't get to do what we do best and our team on the ground wouldn't get to do what they do best. And so it's our way to bring all of those partners together to say, hey, today's an exciting day. We want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate Meta and look at what we've been able to accomplish together. And what a great way to do it in February 2020, because I think I think we all went home from that event and uh, didn't know what was right around the corner. And I know for, for many years, we look back on that that event and, and being there to celebrate with our partners in Ohio and said, man, I'm glad we got that one through because it was an exciting, exciting time. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, those, as you said, those memories had to last for a while because uh, after that, everything was virtual. But uh, you mentioned the data center, the, the groundbreaking started in, in 2017, where then the the grand opening where you welcome the community was in uh, early 2020. So as you said, it takes a long time for this. But what I think is, is, is uh, an important kind of note to this story and, and really the history and impact that Meta has had. And, and I'm wearing our Silicon Heartland shirt where this is kind of the, the you know, the, the uh, there's so much pride across the state that, that technology is bringing. Um, and as someone who grew up in Northeastern Ohio, I've lived in three different regions of the state. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, we were used to companies leaving Ohio and going to other places. And it feels like Ohio 
is not just back in the game, but we're really leading this kind of charge, if you will, for, uh, you know, American innovation and being built right here at home. Um, but what I love about the meta story is it really kickstarted all this momentum that we are seeing. And so as we hear about headlines with flying helicopters coming to the state and, you know, all these data centers, uh, you all were really kind of first. And so if you could maybe talk a little bit about how special, how unique it is for a community to have a data center like yours, um, because there's not many of these in the U.S. There's not many of these in the world. Right. We have 17 right here in the U.S. So, yeah, you are part of that unique group. And I should share, although we broke ground in 2017, there were so many partners on the ground in New Albany, the Ohio company being one that comes to mind frequently, our project teams that really worked for for many years for us to right. be able to call Ohio home. And that's the ba the back end piece, the under the iceberg part that we don't talk about a lot. Just these teams, these companies, but also people on the ground in the community that truly create a catalyst for something exciting to happen, like the event we went to in 2020. Those are the things that we don't always talk about openly, but there's definitely a lot of work that goes in the pre side of even before you put sho shovels in the ground and the many teams that work to get to that point. Um, you know, you talked about Ohio and the amazing things that are happening right there, right there at home. And it's almost like we saw that ahead of time, right? We saw this amazing group of community partners that had a vision for what New Albany could be, what Ohio was, but but truly how we knew we were going to make the best even better. Yeah. And we kind of saw that ahead of time. We saw amazing partners, gosh, the Bill Ebbings, I could go on and on, that just have a vision. And it matched with our vision at Meta and what we saw as a need for a data center. You look also at some of the components we have to see when we're in that site selection phase. We pride ourselves in hiring local talent. I think about the Chris Sewells of the world that we have right there in Ohio, born and raised right down the street. Um, we pride ourselves in hiring local. We want to make sure that when we come into a community, we can truly build out our data centers with local talent and then service them with local talent. It's part of that multiple spending effect that we have in a local economy, hiring local talent, paying them well, and then what that does for an economy. We have to have a shovel-ready site. Um, I think if you you talk about the time of, of pre-2017 before we put shovels in the ground, when we look at our platforms of apps and the 3 billion plus users we have around the globe that we are helping connect through Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, um, Quest, all of these amazing platforms that we have at Meta that are truly connecting billions and bi billions of people around the globe every minute without a data center that will allow us to be have a shovel ready site that allows us to move quickly, that allows us to serve traffic quickly and get those sites built. It's a, it's kind of lose loose for us. We got to be willing to move fast and stay on our, our construction timelines to hit our capacity needs and continue to connect across the world through our platform. So having those partners on the ground and those shovel ready sites and the idea that right there in the Silicon Heartland, we could hire our local talent. Like I can go on and on with the list of those wonderful employees that we have at the New Albany Data Center, our site manager, our facility manager, all of them are local. And I think that's really the story at Meta and something we pride ourselves in. We look for these amazing things that come together that really creates a catalyst for the important work that you see on the ground. Um, and we saw that in New Albany. We saw it early on and we were really able to to work together. Of course, in any sort of project planning, it's kind of like building a house. It's a little bit of a, a big house, Chris, so yeah. not a good comparison. <laughs> but, you know, you're going to have moments where you are working with folks like Jennifer Chrysler and you're going, OK, we really need this. Can we get there? Or, you know, gosh, do you think we can break ground at this point or do we have what we need? Um, but I think, and again, New Albany was one of our, what I call kind of early sites a little bit. So we saw that, um, and gosh, twofold, we've been impressed, right? We just, I look back on that time, but also think to today, what we were able to accomplish just us last Friday at the data center with Ohio X and, and Ohio tech day, we've just found such a great home there and cannot thank our partners like you enough for the work that we've been able to do. And what's so exciting for us is to, is for you guys to see that growth that's yeah. happening right there at home. And for you to say, Hey, that started with meta. We appreciate that. But more importantly, we saw it in you guys all along. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and, and uh, without, uh, I can't 
overstated enough without that support where this is now the third annual that Meta has empowered to make Ohio Tech Day possible. And 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 like that going home after the data center grand opening, uh, as we were kind of coming up with the ideas like, oh, let's get companies and schools. Well, we had to we had to go home and you couldn't do kind of those in person. And so this was really the first year that we got to do this physical in person. It's been so cool, as we like to say, for Ohio Tech Day, let's get Ohio Tech trending. Let's get it trending online. And we've been capturing all these pictures of teachers and companies across Ohio that open their doors, either companies going to schools or schools going to company and building those local connections. And then again, you know, you all kind of really leading the way of welcoming in Columbus City Schools. And, and we have, we'll have full recaps across our social media and online. But I um, want to get back to a couple of times you mentioned shovel ready sites and, and the construction component of this, because you know, when people think of tech and ourselves included, a lot of our partners and members, you know, it's software. And so you don't necessarily think of kind of physical investment, um, you know, needing literally things like shovels and, and construction crews. Um, but these data centers that you all have, um, they are incredible investments into physical infrastructure and the amount of job creation, you know, for construction workers and, you know, people that can do the hard wiring and the plumbing and the HVACs at a data center. It's really incredible. And, and uh, you also mentioned just a bit ago, Turner Construction. Um, and I think that's a bit of an untold story with this tech investment that's been coming to the state is that it's also creating all these other jobs outside of technology. And I'm sure those companies would say, hey, we use tech to, to do our work really, really well and safe and fast. Um, but if you could talk about just that massive investment from the kind of construction side of all of this and what it's doing to kind of, you know, bring that world to the tech world and kind of combine all of it together. Well, that's a that's a great question. And our skills trade component of data center builds is really an important piece. I'm the daughter of a plumber, so I grew up seeing the importance of skills trade. I never learned how to rough a slab, but it's exciting to be in this industry and to work so closely with our GCs around the country and to see that piece of a data center build, because to your point, that is a big piece of the project. Um, we have on average about 1,300 construction workers at the site there, on average, depending on peak times of where we're at with the project out on the New Albany site. So if you look at that, um, it's huge. It's a huge part of the workforce. Um, it takes on average about five to seven years to build out a data center. That's an industry average. So it's a pretty long project, right? We need to make sure that we've got the skilled trades workers there on the ground that are able to pick up throughout various pro projects. But I think it's one of the untold stories of the data center side is all the many jobs we actually have within a data center. They're so diverse in job scope. And it's it's something I don't think we talk a lot about. I am constantly out within our communities. We've got 17 data center communities across the across North America. And the first question people ask me when they hear you work at Meta, and I think if you asked any of our employees, they would say the same thing is, oh, you must have a technology background. And I would say that's not necessarily true. Yes, the infrastructure within our data centers are an extremely important part. We have a lot of wonderful engineers. Our site operations team manage the health of our servers, but we have so many different jobs within our data center spaces. It's facility operations that manages the health of the building. Security, these are secure facilities. If you've ever driven by a data center, you'll see a, a big security gate there. Secure Our security team, our culinary team, our logistics team, there are so many different teams that really come together to create a data center space. And the construction side is a big piece of that, right? With Turner Construction, like I mentioned, we have on average about 1,300 construction workers there on site. And I'm not sure last Friday, for those of you who don't know, we had about 60 students at the data center for Ohio Tech Day and had tables with all of our teams at the data center there and Turner Construction had a table. And so all these students got to see this data center space as our data center space as part of Ohio Tech Day. And the students got to meet all of our different team members within each of our job functions at the data center. So they were actually able to put on one of our headsets, our Oculus headsets, and actually tour a data center like they were building it. So we even have Turner Construction there that has our headsets that can walk through the building phases of building out a data center. So you can really attract really truly a diverse job candidate job candidacy pool because of our jobs and, and just how diverse they truly are. But you're absolutely right. The skilled trades piece of our data center and that impact locally, of course, when you look at those local GCs that we hire, those local 
subcontractors that are part of that GC network, it really does create a unique story within our spaces that really showcase the economic impact we bring to a local community. Yeah, I love that. And and at the Ohio Tech Day celebration, that was one of my favorite, you know, right. images that I've taken with is to see Turner Construction there, you know, construction company, but using the Oculus headsets and the students seated and they're kind of lined up and, you know, playing around with them and taking their tours. Oh. And that, that was really special. And then the other I to your point. Laugh, yeah. Chris, because my, again, almost every summer, my dad would try to take me and my sisters and teach us how to <laughs> dig the ditches and rough the slabs and no. I laugh because even with me in a headset, I still could not really figure out that trade. <laughs> yeah, no, me, me neither. <laughs> it's a unique spirit. He's yeah. returning next week. So it's yeah, I love that. Uh, and the other is, is to your point on kind of the diversity of jobs of, of, of you know, that you're employing and the, the, the diverse, you know, kind of job applicants that you can you can attract. Um, as I've gotten to, to visit the site, um, I've, I've met a number of your team members that uh, come from the U.S. military, which I think is incredible. Um, but because of the data center and some of the, I assume, again, I'm not smart enough to know any of this, but I assume there's a lot of applicable skills from one to the next that a bunch of them have nuclear, have experience working on nuclear submarines. And I think that's just so cool to kind of see, you know, think about transitioning from military to the private sector and kind of that next iteration of careers for military members. Um, but working on things like nuclear, I mean, where do you go? Because that's such a unique thing. But then here you are, you're living in central Ohio and, and you get to work at a place like Meta and the data center, I think is really neat. Well, and Chris, it really is unique because that's across our, our, our entire fleet. We have, yeah. um, we typically base the data center usually around some sort of veteran space, hmm. high veteran population. We hire quite a lot of veterans for our job roles. And if you think about it, it actually makes quite sense because, you know, the military in itself is a very, um, it's high, high stress, right? You're in yeah. situations where you have to move very quickly. You're in situations where you might have to mitigate risk very quickly, depending on what's happening. Uh, we want to make sure that our platform platforms stay up and running for those 3 billion users plus every day. And so if you think about the skill set, if you've got a 20 year military career and the many skills you have working in the military and also working as a team in the military, yeah. that's the piece, the teamwork side. We have a motto at Meta within our infrastructure space, within our data centers, and we call it the one team motto, where each of these teams on the ground in a data center, no one job is more important than the other. They all come together to create a one team Team dynamic so that we can move quickly, so that we can ensure that our servers are up and running, so that if we have a risk with our capacity, we can easily mitigate it together as a team. So you, if you look at the skill set you gain in the military and folks that have had a military career, they make really great fits in the data center space because they have that one team dynamic. They're able to move quickly during high stress situations, but more importantly, they're able to really risk mitigate, but also work together efficiently to solve problems on the ground. So so across our fleet, you'll find quite a lot of veterans that uh, I don't know if I would call, I don't know if they would say second career, but they certainly are enjoying their time at Meta and certainly bring a lot of fun and a lot of skill set to the ground in data center industries. Yeah, I love that. And and another is we're kind of uh, starting to wrap up before we get to some of our, our fun questions that we ask all of our guests at the end. Um, I do want to talk about kind of tech talent pipeline, and that's really where the heart of our partnership that, that, that you all have been so supportive of. Um, but that's a big thing that as we're growing is is we're finding companies in Ohio and I assume everywhere. And you you, you have that snapshot of 17 communities across the U.S. Um, but having tech workers that are, are smart and have the skills. And, and that's what we find is, is that we have great people in Ohio, but we just don't have enough of those tech workers. And so we're trying to increase our tech talent pool um, where we have found uh, the most reward is, is spending time working in K through 12 and building out education partners uh, with school districts. Cause there's a lot of great work happening in our universities and our community colleges. But if we just wait till someone enrolls in a four-year school and uh, selects computer science, well, we've missed out on a whole bunch of smart kids that have may have interest in this and kind of the unique challenge with tech. And, and we've kind of shared it with all the different jobs at Meta is what is tech? I mean, it can be from cybersecurity to data centers, to infrastructure, to, you know, computer science coding type uh, careers, to working in tech, but not having a technical background. And so kind of that career discovery. And so want to, you know, ask from a, a meta perspective why you all have invested so much into this space, um, because we're really trying to inspire more tech companies across Ohio 
to do the same, um, where they can build relationships in their communities with their school districts, their K through 12 education, um, to help get more students interested, excited, passionate about tech careers. Um, and I just think beyond Ohio Tech Day, you know, you all have an incredible partnership with COSI, um, which is a pillar of the Columbus community. And frankly, all of Ohio where people travel. And I remember going to COSI when I was a kid from two hours away to some of the work that your colleague Vic does with Canal Winchester Schools and their Cisco Academy. And so um, why is, why should this stuff matter to tech companies um, and why does it matter to Meta? You know, you kind of described the secret sauce right there, Chris. We talked about just the steps of building out a data center, but we talked a lot about workforce today. We talked about those veterans that come to work at a data center. We talked about hiring local talent. So if you look at the way we run and operate, just where we decide to place a data center, that local talent piece is a huge factor of that. So one of the things that we do immediately when we break ground is really build out those strong connections with all of those K through 12 facilities, not throughout the state, but really right there at home in New Albany and Licking County. We have robust relationships with the school systems. We talked a lot about COVID. The piece that we didn't talk about was, gosh, before we probably all went home on March 15th-ish, we got a call that first week in March that said, hey, from one of our executives that said, hey, we're seeing some schools shut down on the West Coast. Hmm. We think this is going to be a heavy hitter in our data center communities. How much would your team need to be able to deploy resources out on the ground in our data center communities? We did so much funding within our data center communities before schools ever shut, shut down, not just on the one-to-one -one technology impact, but we also looked at where are people going to have broadband connectivity access? We figured out, hey, this school's on one-to-one -one technology, but you've got 60% of the district that doesn't have connectivity. How do we wrap up buses with Wi-Fi and send them out daily to kind of fix the issue while we're all very randomly going home very quickly, but still need to be able to, to, to educate our kids? I look at some of that work that we did just during covid I look at some of the work that we did through K through 12, and that was just a small piece of that outstanding work that we continue to do every single day. We have our annual community action grant program at Meta, again, so hyper local. It's our annual program. We work with K through 12 education systems, our local public schools, our local nonprofits, and work to give out grants around STEM education, connecting the community on and offline, and giving the community the power through technology to make an impact. When you look at that and the long-term impact that has, I can talk through some of the data there, um, but I will give you just a, a quick example. When we broke ground on the data center in 2017, Licking County Schools, I believe there were only 15 or 16 percent of the schools on one-to-one -one technology. Hmm. I don't have the exact numbers today, but I could tell you through our very large investment through that COVID fund, I would say they're well at close to 100 percent. Wow. I look at Jasper County, Georgia, where in 2018, when we broke ground, only 8% of that community was on broadband connectivity, 8%. You look today at that community and, and some of the work we do with our partner called the Center of Rural Innovation, which does some of our broadband connectivity consultant with our key partners on the ground, that community has now seen a significant increase of households that now have broadband thanks to Meta. You talk to superintendents, I always say I have the best kept secret when it comes to, to a job because I get to travel around and hear from teachers and superintendents who say, I have no idea how we would have educated our students during those three months at home during COVID without Meta. Or my school system and district was failing when it came to science and math test scoring in the state before Meta came to town. Thanks to their very key strategic investments, and I think the most important part of this is we don't come in as a technology company, as one of the most successful technology companies in the world and say, this is what I think you should do. We come in with open ears and we say, what do you need and where are your pain points? We listen. We listen to our partners and what the need is in New Albany might look completely different than the need in Prineville, Oregon. Mm. And part of that listening piece of our team is really figuring out how at Meta we continue to impact that K through 12 education system. So that way, by the time we've been in a community for 10 plus years, like Prineville, Oregon, we have these robust pipelines set up for us um, that really rotate around the local economy and the local school system. But 
I could go on and on about the many stories and the many people who just hug your neck saying, thank you. I don't know yeah. what I would do without Meta. Um, I don't know what we would have done during COVID, but more importantly, you guys continue to do this every year through your community action grants. And it's something that we really pride ourselves in. We are proud to call these communities home. Our local team, they have students and kids that are in these local school systems. So it's the least that we can do to give back to communities that have served us so well and that we truly are so proud to call home. These are our homes. And so we want to make a difference as a company. And um, we're really proud of that. Yeah, that's great. And, and it it reminds me of a it, kind of at the height of COVID uh, when I uh, had a, uh, a superintendent call me up and, and mention how uh, even he didn't have, you know, broad because he's a resident of his local community and he didn't have internet access at home. And, you know, for those of us that have it, you take it for granted and you don't realize in our state, there's large swaths of, I think it's like a million plus Ohioans. And this was data from a couple years ago, um, didn't have access to this. And so if you don't have that, then you can't participate in today's economy. You can't do virtual online learning in the middle of a pandemic. You can't work from home. You know, so many of us work from home now. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, connectivity is a powerful thing, but if you can't get connected, then right. you're already, you're already starting off behind folks. So Chris, um, I mean, we could talk all day, but I, yeah. I think about just our partnership with the junior achievement of central Ohio that we've had. And the idea that we're bringing students in to, to truly know what it's like to work at a data center. We have that same partnership across six of our data center communities and it's continuing to grow. The impact there is huge. And I think when you look at us as a company and the places where we have data centers, we embed ourselves in these communities, but more importantly, we listen and we want to make a key impact locally. And I think that's really part of that secret sauce as well as just great community partners that want to work with us to, again, make the best better. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Katie, let's kind of dive into our last portion uh, where we ask a couple of fun questions. And uh, again, we ask all of our guests these, and it's fun to hear different responses from um, CIOs at companies to technologists at some of the biggest, most innovative companies in the world to startup founders. Uh, so the first one is, um, what's a challenge that you're currently working to solve? And so this could be you know, work related, you know, really, really big picture, you know, connectivity or, um, you know, something a little more process oriented, which sometimes uh, we hear from executives, but a challenge that you're currently working to solve. Well, we talked a lot about listening. We just talked about that a little bit. Um, one of the things that I, I think if you ask me what kind of keeps me up at night, it's the what are we missing? What mm -hmm. What is something that, you know, we've tackled the one to one technology. We talked a little bit about broadband. We're doing that as a team, but I think what keeps me up at night is what are we missing? What's the next thing? What's the next COVID? Mm -hmm. um, what is it that we can do better as a team, as a community development team across this, this country to really continue to make that impact, right? I want, I get the, I get folks every day that tell me about the amazing things that we've been able to do in communities. But I want that to continue to be a story 10 years from now, mm -hmm. right? I want us to continue to be those partners that folks like leadership within these communities come to us and say, hey, Katie, I'm struggling with this. Can we work together and fix this? And so I think that's when you're in this technology space and things change so frequently, I think that's the one thing I think that keeps me up at night is what does five years look like? How do we look at these communities and look at the gaps ahead of time? I think we learned our lesson a little bit in 2020. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about today of there are gaps there and there are gaps within our infrastructure systems and we're in the infrastructure space. So how do we continue to look at those gaps ahead of time and really say, hey, let's come together, not just Meta, not just our community partners, but as a community, let's come together as that one team and really think through where are those gaps. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night or I will be doing something and go, ooh, have we thought about that in Eagle yeah. Mountain, Utah? Or, oh man, what's going on in Texas? So I think just that's the one thing, the one challenge I would say is my brain's always spinning around like, what's the next thing and how do we make sure we're continuing to serve our data center communities the right way? Yeah, it's, it's so uh, easy for all of us to get, you know, in the day to day, the tasks, the checklists, but uh, those are kind of bigger picture things. And that's something I enjoy about our work is that we're statewide. So we get to work with communities across our state. But, you know, with you getting to work with all these across the US, it's, it's pretty neat. So, um, Next one is what's a favorite read, listen, or watch? So this could be a book, a podcast, or a show, something that you're enjoying now. Okay, so I'm in a book club. 
Okay. With some amazing women, great friends every first Wednesday of the month. So my first okay. book is tomorrow. So uh, I'm, I just finished Daisy Jones and the Six and I don't watch the TV series until I finish the book. It's part of book club one-on-one. <laughs> so I will start watching the series tomorrow after book club. But I also, I, I'm in the office. I commute into the office every day. I'm a podcast goer. I, if you ask my team, they're like, Katie, we'll send you a podcast every, every Monday morning. Um, I love podcasts. I've listened to all of Brene Brown's. Um, Mel Robbins is becoming a quick favorite for me. So she has a great podcast, but anything I think, cause I usually, listen to podcasts on my commute into work or when I'm running. And so anything that can kind of challenge me in a way to think about leadership differently or really focus on connecting people and showcasing their strengths and building, again, my job is to build up communities, but a big piece of that is looking at the strengths and people and building mm -hmm. them up as well. And so any podcast that can kind of shape that, have me thinking about leadership differently or how I can do something differently next time is something I'm into. So I've listened to all of Brene Brown, um, but Mel Robbins is really good too. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's awesome. Um, and final one, what does a perfect Saturday look like for you? So if you could design your perfect Saturday, uh, how are you spending it? What are you doing? Well, Chris, I won't tell our sports secret <laughs> together on the podcast, but um, gosh, Saturday for me, I mean, my husband and I, we, we work really hard. He works for a national nonprofit and hmm. travels a lot. I, I work across um, North America. So I feel like Saturdays are really our day together. We are excited to be expanding our family in the new year to adding a little boy to our mix. So um, we're excited to kind of bring in Saturday memories um, in a new way starting in 2024. But anything that we can do together, whether it's watching sports, I won't say go dogs on this podcast, but I am a <laughs> University of Georgia alum. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ohio State, I will cheer for Ohio State secondarily, but <laughs> but I am a Georgia alum. Uh, we go to a lot of football games here in Georgia. And um, yeah, but anything we can do together, we... Um, my husband and I, we always say we've been married for so long that we are each other's like partner. We brainstorm work things off each other. But on Saturdays, we like completely disconnect. We usually don't do emails unless there's an emergency happening. We have like no phones and we just kind of talk about other things because throughout the week we really are um, together and we've been partners for so long together that we just constantly bounce things off of each other. We actually work, we actually met each other professionally. So I feel like okay. we kind of bounce professional ideas off each other yeah. and he's my number one, uh, number one resource giver. So um, we just like to spend time together and we're excited to kind of mix it up in the new year with the new edition. That's awesome. Well, Katie, that, that sounds like a perfect Saturday. Uh, that's one thing you're, you're part of the, the U S and our part of the U S uh, very much share in common those college football Saturdays. Uh, it, it's, it, you talk about community. It's, it's one of those things that brings together communities uh, all across the U S certainly in Ohio uh, Saturdays and Sundays are, you know, Browns, Bengals, Ohio state Buckeyes, Cincinnati Bearcats. Uh, this is a big uh, college football and pro football state too. But Katie, I've, I've very much enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much for joining uh, any final comment or anything you want to plug before we hop off here. Um, but again, just really grateful for the partnership that Meta has given Ohio X and uh, looking forward to building more together as this kind of Silicon Heartland opportunity just keeps growing. But any final final notes from you? Chris, I just want to thank you and our many partners on the ground there in Ohio that have been just such key partners for us. I think I think about what we did together last week with Ohio X and Ohio Tech Day and the amazing impact that your organization made across the state. We're proud to sponsor that program. But I, I think Ohio is certainly special. You you talked through all the reasons, and I hope I did too, on what makes Ohio just one great place to call home. And at Meta, we, we couldn't be prouder of Ohio and the great work we've been able to do together and in New Albany to really build out a key piece of our infrastructure that's connecting billions of people around the globe to our platforms and products every day. So thank you for your partnership because without you, we couldn't do this. Yeah, well, thank you, Katie. And again, it's, uh, you know, it, it's so fun to see these amazingly innovative companies, you know, choosing, you know, choosing to be here. And, uh, you know, that's a special thing that you go, it doesn't matter where you go. Uh, I've been in a, a doctor's appointment and 
you know, my, my dermatologist will mention, you know, all the economic development that's been happening. And so uh, you're, you're causing a lot of excitement in the state. and We're grateful for that. So I uh, just want to thank everyone for listening in another Built in Ohio podcast, which we've absolutely enjoyed and loved. Uh, feel free to check it out, share it with friends, uh, help promote this work so we can keep telling more and more stories about the tech successes across the state of Ohio. So thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll talk to you soon and have a great day. All right. Bye bye.